At Henry Love on the North Lawn, Ed, thanks. We are going to get into specifics of a new Senate bill to dramatically, potentially change the terms of the sequester. Joining me are Republican sponsors, Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania and James Inhofe of Oklahoma. Senators, thanks for being here. Senator Inhofe, first to you. What does this bill do? We, we made a decision a month ago that if nothing happens on the sequestration, if the president is successful in getting all these cuts across the board, and my major concern is defense, that we would use the same top line and say, all right, uh, chiefs of the uh, military, make decisions. What can you do, rather than the straight, pure cuts across the board, that would be less damaging that they would, uh, than their first response was, well, we could do that. If we didn't have to just live with the cuts, but the numbers would be the same, it'd be the same reductions, same top line, but we could, within that, make changes to make it less painful for our military. So that was a, that was a month ago, and I talked to the chiefs at that time. They said, yeah, we can do that in a month, and they're doing it. Both in defense and non-defense. That's right, Senator Toomey? Um, that's right. You know, Brett, uh, this government has doubled in size since 2000. The spending has grown enormously. We need the discipline of beginning to reduce spending and at least the rate of growth. That's what we're talking about here. So I want to make sure we get the spending cuts, but I want to do it in a smarter fashion. And so what Senator Inhofe and I have agreed to do, and we're working with other colleagues, on a bill that would give the president some discretion to make the least disruptive cuts possible. But, you know, in the $3.6 trillion budget, there's plenty of waste. They can find it. This is what we're calling transfer authority to give these both the defense, non defense, uh, and the president, the administration, the ability to move this money around. Here's what Democrats are saying when asked about this possibility. Take a listen. Let's assume the president was given flexibility. I think the first place he would look at the defense authorization bill, the reason as I understand it, McCain and others have come out against this flexibility, is it gives the White House more power than they have now. Brad, anyone who tells you that there is some easy off-ramp here is not being straightforward. That idea to me sounds like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic instead of trying to keep the boat from sinking. And I don't think the problem is rearranging the spending. I think the problem is avoiding 700 150,000 people losing their jobs. What about that, Senator? Well, that's not true. Of course, I'm on the Armed Services Committee. I'm the ranking minority. And uh, we spent a lot of time, Senator McCain is right there, and coming up with priorities and coming up with a bill. What our bill does, it says you're going to use the same guidelines as are in the NDA bill, NDAA bill, which is the defense bill. And so we are using in this bill the, uh, all of the work that has been done. And so it's, it's not that way at all. In fact, that, and that was a change that took place. It's still somewhat of a work in progress. But, but the, the bottom line is this, Brett. We have our chiefs, we have our military people who can take that same amount of money and do a lot better with it. And that satisfies those who just want to have the cuts. And so I think it's the best solution. Senator Toomey, when we started this uh, tonight, we had a third chair ready uh, for Senator Manchin. Um, and he couldn't come on. Uh, there's a little pressure here. Are there... Are there Democrats who are ready to sign on to this? How, how does the Democratic uh, position work on this? I, I think the Democrats are divided, and we're having discussions with a number of Democrats who recognize that, uh, you know, when you have to cut spending, probably makes sense to cut in the least painful way <laughs> rather than doing some arbitrary across the board way. So I think we're making some progress. Uh, time will tell whether we get any yeah, Democrats I, to join us. I just talked to uh, 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 the senator from West Virginia. And he, he's very, uh, very receptive to this idea. He wants to wait and see what it looks like. I mean, after all, they want to see what the Democrat plan is first before they get committed to a Republican plan. But you look at your two Democrat senators from Virginia, uh, the, the huge losses that would take place if you're just talking about cuts across the board. But if they can get in there and, and prioritize that, it'd be much less painful. I want you to listen again to the president today, and, and you heard some of it, but here's another soundbite from the president today in Virginia. There are too many Republicans in Congress right now who refuse to compromise even an inch when it comes to closing tax loopholes and special interest tax breaks. And that's what's holding things up right now. Turn to me, he says that's what hold, is holding right, things right. up. You know, through Obamacare, dozens of tax increases on, on and, and just about every American. The end of the year, a massive tax increase that President Obama insisted on. And now what do we hear? More taxes. He wants more taxes for more spending. 
and we're not interested in that. We need the spending discipline. We can do it in a smarter fashion, giving the president some flexibility. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Senator Inhofe, Senate Democrats passed a sequester replacement out of committee, but they never moved it to the Senate floor. Could they have passed that on the Senate floor? No, I don't think so, because I think if they had been able to pass it, it would have been on the Senate floor. Uh, keep in mind, they have control of what goes on the Senate floor. This thing, now, every time I see uh, the president talking about taxes, all he talks about is increasing taxes. That's what Pat Toomey led off with. We've got, we don't have a tax problem. We have too high a taxes now, and we can do this. This is a way, and quite frankly, you can cut a lot of spending that we otherwise couldn't cut. We just want to do it in a smarter way. How much pain is this going to cause if we get there? And it looks like we're going to get there. If your bill doesn't work, it looks like we're going to get there. If we, it, it doesn't have to be painful. We, this, we're talking about 2.5% of a government that has grown by 100%. No, I get that. And we've talked about that for there's a no, week. Yeah, but there's I mean, no question. You hear all that's well, been talked it, about from the White House and the administration. How painful? Well, what's can, the reality? I can tell you how painful on the, on the military part, on the defense part, you heard what Leon Panetta said. He said it would be devastating. First of all, under this president, they've already made a cut of $487 billion over the next 10 years. This would be another one, if, we, if they don't adopt what we're talking about, another half trillion dollars. Now, the half trillion dollars would still come out, but it would be come out of places where we can look at it from a military perspective and not just straight across the board. It's how the sequester is implemented, not necessarily the number, which is what that's, we're trying to exactly explain. Right. Exactly that's right. exactly yeah. right. I mean, because it's roughly 2.3% out of this it, yes, giant pie. I should point out that that's authorizing 2.3%, some of which gets spent over many years. So it's really about 1% of all federal spending this year. And does anyone really think that this government can't find 1% of its spending in savings? Last thing. Uh, the next battle, because this is how we've been operating lately, is the continuing resolution. Uh, do you think there'll be Republican unity on how to deal with funding the government? I hope so. I hope we agree that we're not going to go a dime above the level that's already been established. Look, we're running trillion dollar deficits. We've got 16 trillion dollars in debt. This is totally unsustainable. We've got to begin to get this under control. And the CR that you're talking about, is it's addressed in this bill. It just allows us to go about it and make decisions. We, we, we can live easily on what is out there. The, the only thing that makes defense different from domestic is that this president has already cut a half trillion dollars out of the defense bill. And that's why that's my major concern, because that's my area of interest. Senators Inhofe and Toomey, thank you very much. And uh, we welcome Senator Manchin if uh, he'll come on as well. Thank he you. He would, too. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Brad. Well, do you think Republicans